Hey y'all, hey, it's JJ Conway. Welcome to Building Wealth Together, where our goal is to help you walk in abundance and leave a legacy. It's Wealth Building Wednesday, where we answer your money questions with style and grace. To ask your question, go to buildingwealthtogether.com and click Ask JJ, or leave a voicemail at one 833 ask jjc Normally we'd answer questions, but today we've got some wealth building teaching instead. Before the episode begins, let me remind everyone that my family does a lot of resetting during the summer. And so what you're about to hear is an excerpt from the Women Building Wealth Together conference. And if you'd like more information about what you heard, you can go to jjclink.com slash VIP. And oh, by the way, if you wanna make sure that you are the first to know when we start going live again in September, get on my mailing list. That's at jjclink.com slash list. Now let's get into the show. I am steady talking about my CPA, the wealth building CPA. Her name is Ibarakoya. Thing that I love, 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 love that she does is it's not just send me your receipts at the end of the year. I'll crunch some numbers, sign some paper and pay me throughout the year. And I admit, I don't always take as much advantage as I should throughout the year. There's business planning opportunities. And I remember, I remember one time I'm sitting in her office for my, for my, my annual business review. This was, I mean, she's been doing my taxes since 2007 and I'm sitting in there and I got this big plan. Like I'm going to write these books and I'm going to do these, this, and I'm going to do this, 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 this. And she's like, maybe you ought to just start here. <laughs> and I was so deflated, y'all. I was so deflated, but from a tax perspective, she was like, well, you know, most of my clients do this, 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 and this, and then that. Uh, and that advice served me very, very well. And she has definitely served very well all these years. And so I'm super excited to bring to you all uh, my CPA, the wealth building CPA of Barracoya from uh, wonderful, wonderful Maryland, where it's a great place to be a real estate investor. How are you doing today? Hi, JJ. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. Oh my goodness. I, I think about when I see all the things that you're doing in the community, and then I look at our two boys, the ones that we had in the back of Sherman Raglan's real estate meetings. Yeah. I think, wow, time has really flown, but it does. We don't look like it. We look good and we're doing great things for God's kingdom and for our family's financial future. So I want to welcome you today. I understand that you have a prepared talk for us today. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to just say one more time. I'm so excited that you're in one of my events, and I hope that um, that I hope that everyone listens attentively. Attentively, and now I'm going to turn the floor over to Avericoy. Thank you so much for being here today. Oops. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and um, hopefully everybody can see it. And I will go ahead and make the presentation and then I'll leave it up for questions at the end. All right, so pretty much today we're going to be talking about the wealth building plan. Um, you know, as women, um, one of the most important things, um, of course, next to God is to make sure that we are empowered um, to be able to care for ourselves and care for our loved ones. And so it's very, very critical in that everything that we're doing, that we have a plan laid out um, that's going to help us to um, build wealth. Um, so um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a CPA active real estate investor and the founder of the Wealth Building CPA. I own real estate investments across five states in the eastern coast helped over 5,000 people like you prepare taxes online and offline. And my greatest joy comes from helping clients, friends, and associates become free of financial stress. Um, I've been in the industry for so many years and i um, familiar with money-saving strategies, which we love to implement all of the time. i um, been a CPA 27 years and a real estate investor and business owner for 22 years. So with this combination, I'm able to work with a lot of women and bring them strategies um, that can help them build long-term, sustainable, transferable wealth. Okay, um, this is my lovely family. Of course, that's the little one where I had with JJ and we had the babies at the back. All right, um, so today we're going to look at the wealth building plan. We have eight stages of the wealth building plan. Um, these are critical steps 
that you want to take yearly. These are things that you need to be looking at on a yearly basis if you want to build um, long-term sustainable wealth. Um, so the wealth building plan is like a 12 month training program where we take you step by step through each um, step that is required to run a successful and efficient <clears throat> real estate business or even any business in general. Um, we've developed this system after years of working with business owners and investors on how best to use their professional skills, passion, experience to pursue their entrepreneurial dreams. So we focus on things like tax planning, tax preparation, entity structuring, business meetings. And at the end of 12 months, our goal and our hope is that you're able to operate your business successfully, but more than that, you're equipped. You know exactly what it is that you want to look out for um, to be able um, to build wealth. So let's dive right in. The first thing is the financial needs analysis. A lot of people overlook this step, like when they want to build wealth or when they want to start a business or if they want to invest in real estate. You know, people just say, oh, I want to quit my job or I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. Or, I want a thousand dollars. I want to make a million dollars. I want to, you know, I want to go on vacation every week or every month um, without necessarily doing a financial needs analysis. So for us, when you work with us, that's the first step because we want to get crystal clear about what you want out of life and determine what you will and will not do in order to build your business. Um, the other thing that we look at during this stage is the time. How much time do you have? How much money do you have? What are your skill sets? Um, because all fingers are not created equal. It's possible that I might have 20 hours a week to build my business, but then I also have a full-time job, or I might have 40 hours, or I might have $100,000 in the bank, or I might have nothing, um, or I might not even have the skill set and I need to get through a coaching program um, in order to get the necessary skill set. So the financial needs analysis is, first of all, taking a look at where you are now, looking at your assets, looking at your liabilities, the time that you have, the skill set that you have, the amount of money that you have. And then our job is to help you bring all those buckets together to come up with a plan that would be sustainable um, so that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you can look back and see that you achieved your goal. Um, the stage two, we look at tax planning and preparation. Um, we look at your tax returns for the last three years and we review it for accuracy and consistency, audit flags, overlooked deductions. And an important part of the reduction planning is not wasting deductions or making elections to take advantage of unused deductions. So there's a lot of deductions that are available for small business owners. There's a lot of um, loopholes that you can legally take care of to reduce your taxes. And that's what we do during this stage. I'm um, here, we're doing like a post-pandemic analysis. You know, we look at the use of how did you use your PPP loans for those that were on employment, the IRA distributions. These are all things that are now playing a huge part. You know, the stimulus checks, credits, what all those mean um, during your um, tax preparation. So at this stage, we're reviewing your returns and coming up with a strategy um, so that you don't pay more than your fair share of taxes, okay? The next stage that we look at is entity structuring. Um, entity structuring is using your legal entity to provide asset protection and tax mitigation. So we usually look at three things when you're setting up an entity. We look at the legal liability, um, and then we look at the tax reduction strategies and then the ease of compliance. So every entity structure is not created equal. You know, you might start out with a sole proprietorship and then you need to move to an LLC, then you might need to move to an S corp, then we might need to consider bringing in a C corp. And then we look at trust. So we look at, you know, bringing attorneys who would help you look at the legal side, but then we also pay attention to the tax side. A lot of errors that we've seen people make when they are setting up their entities is that they're only focusing on one aspect. They're only looking at maybe just the tax side, or they're only looking at the legal side, or they're not even paying attention to the compliance, everything that you need to do on a yearly basis to keep that entity in good standing. So in this stage, we take a look at everything that you have entity-wise, assets, what you own, what your risks are, what you could be exposed to, what kind of taxes that you have to pay, and then come up with an entity structure 
um, that would maximize these three things for you. So some common mistakes that we've seen people make. Um, number four mistake is not having an entity structure that shields you. A lot of people have LLCs, but their LLCs are not really protecting them. And so we call that a toxic LLC. It's possible for you to have an LLC, but then your personal assets are still totally exposed. You know, you might think, oh, I set this up and, oh, it's going to protect me. And then a lawsuit comes and you realize that, here yeah, the, the corporate veil um, can be pierced. So it's very important to make sure that an entity that you set up to protect you and shield you is actually doing that. Um, so it's not just going to the state and registering and getting the EIN number. The operating agreement matters. You know, the kind of assets that you have there, the businesses that you have, the kind of insurances that you put in place, um, all those matter. Um, not understanding the two types of creditors. There's a bottom-up creditor and then there's a top-down creditor. The bottom-up creditor has a claim of judgment against the LLC that is arising out of the company that rather than the omissions of the member. So it's very possible for you to set up an LLC and that LLC will protect you from the top-down creditor, meaning they cannot come after you personally, but they can come after the LLC. And if the LLC has properties in there or assets or businesses, why do they need to sue you? They can sue the LLC directly and have access to whatever equity that you have here. So it's making sure that you understand the two types of creditors when you're setting up your entities, okay? The next stage that we look at is actually now getting the businesses registered and setting up your bookkeeping. Um, so we're gonna look at the different stages that we use when we set up your business. So first of all, we have you, you know, fill out a business registration form, and then we submit it to the State Department. Once we receive that acknowledgement, we obtain an EIN number, and then with the EIN number and acceptance of filing, you open up a bank account. And then after that, you draft an operating agreement. We use one that has been prepared by your attorney. And then we look at cash sweep, um, which is all the expenses that you incurred prior to setting up the entity in order for it to be deductible, you need to have those expenses showing up on your business bank account. And then we also look at the bookkeeping process. Um, some of the mistakes we've seen people make is when they use themselves as the resident agent or you're using your home address when you register the business. So you want to make sure that if you really want to protect yourself, that you're not using your home address or using yourself as the resident agent when you do set up the business. Um, the next stage that we look at is the business analysis meetings. You know, most privately held organizations have the alternative board, um, but most small business owners, mom and pop shops, it's just you, you wear all the hats. And so one of the things that we do as part of your wealth building plan is to help you hold these very critical meetings where we're looking at the different things. We're looking at marketing, we're looking at operations, we're looking at financial, we're looking at the team, we're looking at leadership, we're looking at how your business is doing today, we're looking at the environment, you know, with inflation going up and with the whole work from home and the great resignation, these are all things that we're looking at and how can your business remain sustainable through these difficult times. So those are the things that come up during the business meetings. We do this at least once a year. Um, for our clients, we're getting ready to do it. We do it May and June is when we're taking, you know, having meetings with our business owners to see exactly what is going on with their business. Okay, so the next thing is purchasing a property or in, you know, you could also buy stocks and stuff. So during this stage, we discuss the different real estate strategies that are available to you. Real estate still remains one of the fastest ways to build generational wealth. And so um, having real estate as part of your wealth building plan is very critical. So we'll look through the different strategies. There's so many real estate strategies out there. You know, I'll just mention some of them, bird dogging. You know, you find a property, you mention that to somebody else, they get the property, they pay you a fee. There's wholesaling, you find a property, you put it under contract, and then you sell your contract rights to somebody else and they pay you a fee. You can make anywhere from 5,000 
to hundred thousand dollars. I've seen somebody make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars just in a wholesale fee. You can also do a rehab. You find a property, get it on the contract, purchase it, rehab it, and turn around and sell it. You can also be a landlord. You buy a property, fix it, and then rent it out. Um, there's notes. You know, there's commercial real estate. There's sandwich leases. So there's I think we have about 16 to 17 different real estate strategies out there. So it's finding which strategy works for you and making sure that you have the right skill set um, to be able um, to build your wealth. Okay. Um, the next stage that we look at is retirement planning. I know a lot of people want to retire, but there's the complexity and the time required to build a successful retirement plan. So the, we help during this stage because there's a a lot of retirement plan strategies are available to small business owners where you're able to contribute a lot more than the general workforce out there, you know, looking at making sure that your business has value so that if you decide that you're going to sell this business tomorrow, there's enough equity in the, in the business for you to be able to sell the business and then also the assets of the business. So kind of looking at your whole retirement plan and, you know, how much you're going to get from social security or from pension or from your 401k or from if you had the rental properties and stocks, you know, taking a look at all of that to make sure that you're able to have a comfortable retirement. Um, the CARES Act generally removes 10% penalty on early withdrawal. So one of the things that we're looking at for a lot of our clients is that for those of them who did an, a retirement withdrawal where they spread it out over three years, the possibility of paying that money back so that you get a tax benefit um, in 2021 and 2022. So we will help you in coming up with the process that you need to plan, implement, and execute um, a comfortable retirement. All right, this is the last stage year in tax planning. I tell people that April 15th is your tax filing deadline, but December 31st is your tax savings deadline. I know a lot of people know about the April 15th deadline and a lot of people are not paying attention to the December 31st um, deadline. With April 15th, that's compliant. That's when the IRS is saying, oh, you need to have your taxes done by this time. But as a small business owner, as a woman who wants to build wealth, as somebody who wants to do generational wealth, you should be more worried about December 31st. So November, December is when we're working with our clients to kind of look at everything that has happened during the year and come up with strategies to reduce their taxes before the year runs out. Because once December 31st is come and gone, there's very little that you can do um, to reduce your taxes. So these are the things that we look at during the year. And, you know, can we set up a retirement account for you? Can we push income into later years? Can we accelerate some expenses? Can we defer some decisions? Um, can we restructure your business, like maybe move you into an S-Corp? Do we need to revoke the S-Corp election? You know, do we need to do cost segregation to be able to take more depreciation? So those are all the little things that we look at during the year and tax planning. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, so we can open it up for questions um, right now. I'll take questions until we have time to end. All right. I do, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. If you have a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat. I do have, I was trying to click it up real quick before she finished. I do have a couple of pre-submitted questions from folks uh, about when um, we thought we were going to have her come speak. And the first one, I think you kind of answered because you talked about the toxic um, LLCs. But the first question that I have is, can you outline from a tax perspective what the best entity to state your business? And I think what you said you kind of already answered. There's no one best. It's really not just a tax question. Can you expand? Can you can you expand on that a little bit again? Yes. So the best entity for you is you have to look at three things to decide on what the best entity is. You have to first look at what your business strategy is. Um, for somebody who's actively earning income, the entity that they're going to need is different for somebody who has passive income. Um, then you also look at the legal aspect, what protects you? 
Um, and in order to know what protects you, you need to know what assets you actually have. Um, because a business asset is different from real estate, is different from stocks, is different from your time, is different from intangible assets. So from the legal side, we're looking at what kind of exposure um, do you have based on your business? And then the most important thing is also, you know, looking at the ease of compliance. So it might be possible that you want to set up a C Corp. But if you need to be doing the board of directors meetings, the annual meetings, you have to file this report every year, you have to pay this amount of money. Okay, yes, it might help you, you know, with tax benefits and it might help you on the legal side. But if there's a lot of compliance requirements that you're not able to keep up with, it doesn't even make sense to set up those entities. You know, people would say, hey, I need to form an entity in Wyoming or Nevada, or all that. But the ease of compliance becomes burdensome and it defeats the whole purpose for why you set up the entity in the first place. So we usually look at those three things um, when we're making that decision. Thank you, thank you for that. One, one other question I have here and then I see a couple are starting to trickle in in the chat. Um, can I claim home office deduct? Can I claim home office deductibles? I guess what, I think what they're asking is, can I deduct the home office? And I know that that's changed a lot over the years. And um, especially with everything going on with COVID, I imagine there's just going to even continue to be some change in that. But but I guess I guess let's let's phrase it this way: What can we claim as a, for our business for home office versus for our? This person was asking for their regular job, and I think maybe you could speak to that because people were forced to go home and consume their electricity and their internet and their things like that that they didn't used to have to consume for work versus um, now also business side. So when you have a bona fide business mm -hmm. claiming on the business side, can you speak to those as well? Yeah, unfortunately, nothing changed in the tax law for, yeah, <laughs> for the home office. What actually changed before the pandemic? I wish they had not made the change and fooled around with it. But what changed before the pandemic was before the pandemic, you were able to deduct miscellaneous deductions and the home office was part of that. But after, you know, I think that was in 2018, I remember the year they did away with the 2% miscellaneous deduction. So the home office was no longer deductible for those who have regular jobs. And then now comes the pandemic and now you're using all this home office for the job and you're not getting any deduction for it. Well, most companies were looking at setting up like an accountable plan, you know, where rather than paying you that money, can they deduct it from your, you know, paycheck and then have that go towards like a reimbursable expense for a home office. And with that reimbursement, then it's pre-tax. At least you're not paying tax on that money. It's a pre-tax. But the company has to be um, okay and agree to set up that plan um, on your behalf. But other than that, there's very um, little that somebody who is an employee is able to do by way of deducting home office expenses for working from home. Wow, that and and that that's unfortunate because you know a lot of companies are saying, "Oh, look, we can save all this money by making our people keep working from home, but they're not paying us more to cover all the extra stuff." Now, mm -hmm. some companies are providing the laptops and things yeah. like that, but some mm -hmm. aren't. And yeah. I've heard stories. I've had I've had people come to me for financial coaching who have lost their job because they weren't going to buy this or that. And I'm like, yeah. wow, you know, a lot of us work in at will states, yes. so they can fire you at will. That he doesn't have to have cause. So, and that leads into um, a question that's coming. Up. Well, wait, let's let's go. Okay, so that's for people who have jobs. But what about businesses? Like, if you have a business bonafide business operating out of your house. I know the rule it used to be you could claim percentage of, oh, you know what? I need this question now because I don't have my office in the mall anymore. I have my office in the house. <laughs> Wait a second. I need this question. It used to be you could, you could claim a portion of your electricity mm -hmm. and all that stuff for the business. Yeah, so the rule is that first of all, that space has to be exclusive use. You have to have the space used exclusively for the business. So it's not one of those rooms where you have, you know, Junior's bed in there or whatever, or your living room, or you're working out of a corner. It has to be exclusive 
use. So that's the first step. And then if it, if it is exclusive use, then now you have to do the percentage, the square foot of the office versus the total square foot of the house, then you're able to deduct everything else that comes with it. But the most important thing is that exclusive use you know, you can't have like a bed or a TV or any other thing going on there, then it's not exclusive use. And then for those that meet the exclusive use requirement, then now you are able to, um, you know, deduct like your mortgage interest, taxes, rent, utilities, even the purchase price of the home based on the square footage of the home to the overall square footage of the house. All right. All right. And I've got, I've got another question that I've got written down, but I'm going to go with these questions from the comments real quick. Um, it kind of leads into the other one that we just talked about. Do you, do you work with clients in all 50 states? Yes, we do. We have clients. All I'm over. so glad you do. You followed my military yeah. career from state to state to state to state. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. And then, um, there's, there's, well, I'm going to save Beverly. I'm going to save your question for the end, because that's a great lead into for a bear to tell us how to reach out to her. Um, one, where'd it go? I just had a question. Um, okay. Never mind. Uh, let's, um, <laughs> what if they're the owner, Dennis, I'm going to need you to give me just a little bit more, um, background on your question so we can get you a good answer. All right. Um, but we're really happy that you're here today. I'm really happy everybody's on today. Uh, this is such an important topic. I just had a question. Where on earth did it go? Um, okay. So, well, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and Beverly wants to know about, are you doing consultations? So let's talk a little bit about the process of doing consultations. If somebody does want to work with you, uh, what's their next step? Okay. So I can share my screen real quickly. Okay, so um, this is how you can get in touch with me. We have our 1888 number, we have our website, and we have our email address um, that you can reach us. We have a lot of information on our website. And then if you want to have a consultation with us, you first start out with our business development specialist. Um, once she does the screening and determines if we're a fit, then if you want to talk to me, there's a paid consultation. And then after that, we decide if we're able to work together, either in the capacity of helping you implement the overall wealth building program, or you just do like an a la carte service if you want us to prepare your taxes or set up your entities or do consultations year end tax planning to so any service that you want. So that's pretty much um, the process. I hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from the Women's Building Wealth Together Conference. To hear the rest of the talk and access many, many other wonderful talks, go to jjclink.com slash VIP. That's jjclink.com slash VIP. Y'all take care and be blessed. Love the podcast? Be sure to like, subscribe, and forward to three friends. You can ask a question or take a life-changing class at buildingwealthtogether.com. Now, go walk in abundance and leave a legacy.